Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to this lecture on Network Security Group or in short we also called as NSG and uh, within this lecture we're gonna learn about what exactly NSG are and Network Security Group and how we are gonna use this Network Security Group in order to secure your uh, as your resources especially virtual networks as well as your virtual machines so let's have a definition of uh, what exactly virtual network security group so with the help of ne network security group uh, within Microsoft there is a way to activate a rule so within this you are actually going to create a, a rules uh, for inbound and outbound and you will make sure that only that rule matches will be allowed within your network so in other way you are actually creating a access control list for inbound as well as the outbound of your traffic so where you're going to apply this entire uh, network security groups are you're going to apply at the top of your virtual networks that's nothing but your subnet layer or maybe you can apply at VM level so what happens is whatever is gonna come inside or outside it must match the rules or in other words access control list let's say if a protocol is there and that protocol if it is matching that specific port and if it is coming from a source it will validate the source as well as the destination and the action so this is where it's going to use the network security group if you can remember or go back and uh, what we understand about virtual networks in the previous lectures or the concept of the virtual network is uh, you will have the address pool within that you can have multiple subnets so every subnet um, can have different Azure resources that's what we learn within the Azure uh, virtual networks now it's time for us to understand more about the network security groups so if you read entire this uh, definition how we're gonna apply is you can actually apply the NSG at your subnet level that is here or maybe here like you have maybe a 10.1.1.0 subnet and you might have maybe another subnet like 10.1.2.0 slash 24 within this subnet you can assign so what would happen is let's say from 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet if a machine has to go out and communicate that's outbound and if a traffic is coming from outside to inside of this virtual machine so that's called incoming so it must have to follow the rules or it must have to meet all the access control list or ACL or ACL it must to have some rule that should be matched otherwise if you see here the default rule is deny if it is not matching any of these it's gonna deny so that's what happens even similarly here also but if you see interestingly here on outbound port everything is going out is allowed so from here you are allowing all your users to go and talk and go and browse any website or maybe go and talk try to talk with any resource maybe either internal or maybe external to the public uh, internet so that's the outbound but where is the incoming anything from the outside of your virtual network that's like maybe you might have another vnet or maybe internet um, from internet it's trying to in come inside of your subnet you're actually blocking and you're allowing only specific port let's say if you're trying to do rdp from your public ip uh, machine which is maybe you're sitting on your home and you're trying to connect to this virtual machine on a public IP if the RDP port because the uh, RDP is works on a specific port definitely that um, protocol so that's a 3389 so if that uh, rule is matching here for the incoming then only it will allow otherwise it will block so that's how it's gonna work um, we are gonna have a look on how to create this uh, NSGs in a minute or so but but for now this is the concept I wanted to explain to you 
by any chance if you're trying to get into a confused state uh, of routing that's not the case because routing is something uh, always open for every machine and it can go and communicate but in this case it's like your main door where whether you want to allow that specific a protocol or communication inside your either subnet or to maybe a virtual machine that can be configured but whereas the routing is like a path or whether you want to you know, go by w what direction maybe you want to go over the public route or maybe a private route that's a uh, completely different uh, when when you try to compare with the routing so do not compare with the routing and routing is completely different than the security side virtual network resources can be fully secured with the help of network security group and also you might have a question like uh, can i apply one at subnet layer and another nsg maybe at virtual machine level yes you can do that so what happens is uh, it will check for the it just you know put all those uh, your incoming and outgoing policies uh, within the list and it will check for whatever the policy is taking highest priority with the blocking policy gets always applied let's say you're actually here allowing rdp protocol that means from outside to inside to do the rdp and um, and if if a machine is trying for example this machine since you applied rdp protocol enable at the subnet layer for all these three machines it should work the rdp protocol let's say this is the first machine if i try to uh, connect to the rdp it will work because at the nsg level i have allowed uh, the exception with the protocol called rdp maybe here let's say if i just create it here with the rdp protocol it will allow me uh, because this NSG is applicable for entire subnet layer so within this subnet you have different uh, resources and let's say if one machine also have a NSG assigned as a dedicated and uh, where you are actually blocking maybe just for the security purpose so in that situation what happens is if you try to RDP till the subnet layer it's fine but when it comes and try to reach to this machine it's going to block because whatever the rules are taking here is going to take the uh, precedence because you have a DNA option not the allow option so might be here allowed but here it is denied uh, so that's how it's going to work so yes you can do configuration at the subnet layer as well as the virtual machine layer so uh, if you think about what happens when we try to configure to the virtual machine it's nothing but uh, it's going to actually associate with the virtual network card so all about the network card that's why i mentioned here the network card so uh, it will assign for your network card so nsgs will assign either for the network card or to the your subnets so that's how it's going to work so we are going to try with the demo in the next lecture thank you for watching this we'll catch you in the next lecture